One of the most uh, common questions that I have received probably over the last 10 years or so uh, from people who are interested in uh, living a God-conscious life and interested in uh, having a God-conscious family, one of the most common questions has been in relation to how uh, one is supposed to deal with, as a parent, one is supposed to deal with uh, a situation where uh, children uh, or child or children are not responding or are uh, behaving in ways that are challenging or difficult okay, for the parent as far as, especially as far as uh, the deen is concerned. I want my child to pray, but they're not praying. I want my child to learn the Quran, to read the Quran, but they're not doing it. Uh, or if they are doing it, they're only doing it when they're forced to do it, and otherwise they wouldn't do it. Okay? Or, this is a very, very common, common, common scenario. Many of you are living this scenario right now, in your own houses. Okay? And I can see some smiles, and that tells me you're the ones. Yeah? Right? So that's the, many of us have experienced this. We have experienced this. Some of us have older children. And then we, re we, we are now living, we live perhaps even daily with feelings about whether we could have done better, should have done better, what happened. Now my son or my daughter has gone off somewhere, they're doing something else, they're living their own life now. And I don't really know how God conscious they are, whether they are a good Muslim or not. What is it now? And then, then people live with a lot of perhaps regret, anxiety, guilt, all of these negative emotions and feelings occupy a person's mind and their heart. Uh, and of course, if you, because I know it's half term and so there are a lot of young people here, don't worry, this isn't going to be just about parents, it's also going to be about children too and some advice or thoughts for children. So I want to say, this is a topic which re I rarely ever discuss publicly. But because of the frequency with which is uh, coming these questions, I thought I would share with you some initial, they are initial thoughts and reflections from my perspective on this issue that may help you uh, in your current situation. First of all, it's very important to realize, and I think this is a fundamental principle, is that parents think that they can achieve more than they truly can. Parents think they can achieve more than they truly can. Meaning, they think they have more potential influence on their children than they truly have. And they also overestimate uh, the level of their responsibility. Overestimate. No doubt, parental responsibility is amongst the highest levels of responsibility. But many parents get into a difficulty and they behave in ways that are counterintuitive, that actually go against the very objectives that they have because of the level of responsibility that they feel that they have. What does that mean? It means that because you are so concerned about your son or daughter's progress and their development and their learning and their spiritual state and etc. etc. You're so concerned about it that the way that comes across, it comes across with a level of sometimes frustration, sometimes a level of emotional kind of... Um, let's say fullness, that actually has counterproductive results. Most of the scenarios that come my way, they come my way, why? Because it's got to a point where there's constant conflict. There's a household of conflict, constant fighting. The only topic, if you like, around which there is, or is occupying the entire household is this particular issue. Okay? Where there is a conflict or a wedge that has driven between uh, parents and children on the basis of the level of adherence, for example, or religiosity, etc. The prophets, the prophets had, were limited in the extent of their influence. The prophets were limited in the extent of their influence on their parents, on their own spouses, on their own children. That's very famous. We all know this. The father of Ibrahim, right? The father of Ibrahim, the son of Nuh, the uncle of the Messenger Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, etc., etc., etc. And amongst others as well, Lut, his wife. So the prophets were limited in the extent of their influence on those who were closer to them. So who are you and I? Who are you and I? Even the Prophet wasallam in the Quran, Allah always addresses the Prophet Muhammad wasallam, telling him basically to calm down. To calm down. Actually, yes, you have a level of concern, but realize the limits of your responsibility and your duty. وَمَا عَلَيْكَ إِلَّا الْبَلَاغُ الْمُبِينَ The only thing that is upon you is to convey clearly. And this is very important. Because what you want to think about as a parent, as a prospective parent, as a current parent, or as someone who perhaps has gone past that stage even, and these principles apply generally, not just into parent-child relationship, but in, frankly in anything where it comes to influencing another person. Right? You can, you can apply it anywhere. The limits of your responsibility are to convey clearly. Most parents that I come across, that's where they actually fail in the first place. They haven't actually conveyed clearly. Now they might have in their own mind, yeah, but do salah is not conveying clearly. 
sitting with your child or facilitating with your child, for example, the environment in which they can understand why they're doing Salah in the first place, the wisdom of it, the place of it, give, helping them experience it in a positive way, etc., etc. These are all aspects of, if you like, conveying clearly. Okay? But then also Allah says, وَمَا أَنْتَ عَلَيْهِمْ بِجَبَّارٍ you are not to be a tyrant over them, nor can you compel them. This is about the Prophet and the people. But this applies similarly in a parent-child relationship. Many of us, with all the best will in the world, we enter what basically can be classified as quasi-tyrannical behavior when it comes to our children. Not realizing that in the end, that will only be counterproductive. Because in the end, one day, whether we like to think about it or not, those young children over whom we have current responsibility and we feel we have a sense of authority and control, it will not be very long at all okay, before they are in their own environment making their own decisions without you in the picture. That day will come, like inevitably, as it has come for all of us who are grown adults as well. We may love and respect our parents and engage with them, but frankly, when we make our decisions, we make our decisions on our own criteria and basis. It has been influenced by them, yes, but by different influences too. And the same will happen for your, for your children. So what is the memory that you want to leave them with? You see, a child, when they, well, they are grown and they think back to their childhood, what is the memory that you want them to have in association or in relation to the particular issue when it comes to prayer, to, uh, to uh, learning? So many of us as adults have negative memories with regards to this in our own childhood. A number of adults have told me that I haven't touched the Quran for years because as a child in the madrasa environment was negative for me and I literally that put me off. I feel traumatized as a result. So many, maybe some of you are in that situation, that scenario. Don't underestimate the extent to which having a frustrated and a, an anger-filled uh, situation at home, even with the best will of the world, will have the same impact on your child 10, 15, 20, 30 years down the line. But even if a child is not adherent right now, and as they go and take their own journey, when they think back and they feel that they, ha they had positive memories in terms of that there was clear conveying, there was a gentleness, there was a love, there was clarity. At certain times, yes, there may have been discipline too, but there was a reasonable balance. It didn't get to that kind of crunch point okay, of fighting and tension too quickly and all of the time. Then there is more likelihood that that child will, in the end, in the end, at least the, the experience of childhood will not be the reason, if you like, as to why they have developed this distance between them and their Lord. So this is a very important point, not to overestimate the limits of your responsibility, to have a patience. And I want to give a practical point here as well, which is very hard, it's very hard to do as parents, but it's very important. Is that instead of telling, instead of telling, instead of ordering, instead of commanding, try suggesting and inviting. Instead of telling and ordering and commanding, try suggesting and inviting. And early on, respect the choice of the child. Early. Early on. Meaning, that even if they say no, fine, at times hold back. Let them pray. Do not underestimate the power of a suggestion left hanging. Do not underestimate the power of a suggestion left hanging. You made a suggestion, child rejected suggestion. Okay, it's up to you. But I really advise you, suggest this is really in your best interest. It's a really good idea for you to do this. But if you don't want to do it, okay, fine, no problem. That's the hardest thing. It almost feels, comes across as irresponsible. But trust me, that will sit with the child. They will work through that. They will process that. It will stay with them. It will stay with them. And eventually, you'll find that they may surprise you in terms of the responsibility and the proactivity that they may start now start to show. Because you're basically treating them like an adult from an early age. Right? No adult likes to be told and commanded and ordered. I'll take an invitation. I'll take a suggestion. I'll take a good idea. But after that, thank you very much. I'll do it. I'll now make my decision. Right? But children are not too dissimilar from a very, very early age. And that is likely, again, to have a powerful impact potentially in the way that a child processes and manages their decision. Because what you want to do is grow a responsible child who can act independently of you. And be there as a sounding board, as someone to set parameters. But you, what you're trying to do is facilitate another person, another human being, to take their own journey. Not to take your journey. This is very important. Very important. Conscious of time, so I'm going to stop there with regards to parents and I will move now to children because there's many of you amongst you, young people with, amongst you, right? Teenagers, younger, etc. So two things I want to say. Number one is, no matter how your parents come across to you, no matter how your parents come across to you, they love you very much and what they are telling you is because they love you and it is in your best interest. So always, always don't react to what your parents tell you 
based on the fact that oh, my parents have, such, have said such and such a thing, and your default response sometimes becomes just to reject or oh no, or to complain or to fuss. Right? Yeah. Right? That happens. Okay? He smiled. I mean, that, that, he responded to that one. Okay? That's your default response sometimes as a child. I know. I wish it was the same, I'm sure, for long periods of time as a child. At certain points, that's how it is. You've got to always, with anyone, your parent, whoever it is, when someone makes a suggestion or asks you to do something or maybe tells you to do something, respond on the basis of, is this a sensible idea? It doesn't matter who it came from. Sometimes the worst person in the world can give you the best idea. And sometimes the best person in the world may not have to do the same. Right? But always process the thing that you are receiving on the basis of, does this make sense for me? Right? Does this make sense? Why are they saying this? Even if they don't say it in a way that you like. Don't respond harshly. Don't respond in a way that is inappropriate. Okay? Understand that your parents have 20, 30, 40 years more on earth than you have had. Yeah? That comes with a certain level of experience and understanding, which you one day will have. And you will re realize when you grow up that, yes, now I understand why my parent was like this, or why they said such and such, when you have your own children. So bear that in mind. And the second thing is, in relation to this, but it's very important, is you have to learn to take responsibility for yourself very quickly. You, even if you are five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, at this age, and certainly by the time you're a teenager, you're basically an adult. I mean, from our perspective, you're an adult, right? I mean, this whole 18 is an arbitrary thing. From our perspective, you're an adult. So behave like one. Take responsibility. Be proactive. Be proactive in how, take responsibility for your household more, right? Relieve your parents of certain responsibilities where you can. Don't be the, the stone in their shoe. Don't be the thorn in their side. Be the one that is going to bring about a, an atmosphere of pleasantness and happiness in your household. And realize that if, even if you think you can escape your parents, you cannot escape your Lord. You cannot escape your Lord. So if we think we're clever as kids, and we know, I've done, felt the same, I'm sure, as a child, right? You got away with it. No, no, you never get away with it. You didn't get away with it. Maybe they don't know, maybe they didn't see. But the one who knows and sees everything, knows and sees. And he saw everything. And whilst you might have a, ch uh, might, whilst you might have a chance as a child, right, to transition and to come good, you have to, the sooner you get this into your mind and into your heart, the better it's going to be for you, the better for your relationship, right, the better for your parents, the better for your household. Everybody wants to live in a happy home. And a happy home basically relies on everybody being responsible, taking responsibility doing their part, communicating properly, but giving people space when they're not cooperating to a certain degree. Giving people space, allowing people to make their mistakes, allowing people to make their decisions. So it's a very delicate issue, it's a very delicate balance. In what I've said, I hope there is something that is beneficial by way of principle that may occur to you as something that I could maybe alternate or try a different strategy in terms of how I'm tackling various issues at home. Because as someone said, if you do what you always did, you'll get what you always got. Right? If you do what you always did, you'll get what you always got. So we're in our homes where we can try to apply different approaches sometimes. It's very easy, especially as fathers. And I'll finish with this. One of the most common complaints right, that is received, and maybe I'm guilty of this too. I don't know. Allah knows best, right? Most, of the com most common complaints is from mothers about the absenteeism of the fathers. Most common, most common thing they said. Father is not interested. Father is not there. Father is not proactive. Father is not doing the job. Because we think our only job is to put bread on the table. Isn't it? Let's, let's, let's say the truth. That's the truth. We think our only job is to put bread on the table. If we've done that, why is everyone hassling me? Why is everyone hassling me? Well, you do it. You sort it out. No, you are the head of the household. I'm the head of the household. So take, if you don't take responsibility, how can you expect anyone else in your house to take responsibility? You have to be proactive, be present. Uh, learn to un know or understand who your child actually is. Initiate activities with them that will surprise them that you're interested to play with them, to go out with them, to, do for, to engage in entertainment with them. That it's not all about constantly, have you done your work, have you done your salah? I mean, if that's literally the extent of your relationship, it's not going nowhere. It's going nowhere. So this is very, very important for us to realize. May Allah bless our households. May He enable us to have the wisdom and the courage and the insight to constantly iterate, to reflect, to have the humility to realize our weaknesses and shortcomings and to build homes of piety and God consciousness and may he make us all responsible in doing so. I seek Allah's forgiveness for myself and for you. So seek his forgiveness. He is the most forgiving. He is the most merciful.